So here's an interesting question. Why are we ignoring America's most dangerous volcanoes? Check it out. And don't forget to leave your comments, share our channel, ding the bell, and subscribe to our channel. Moran has been uh, looking into the possibility of volcanic eruptions in the Pacific Northwest, among other things. He's a scientist in charge at the Cascades Volcano Observatory. Uh, part of the U.S. Geological Survey, usgs.gov is the uh, website. Uh, Dr. Moran, I, I, I hope I'm saying, pronouncing your last name correctly. Welcome to the program. I mean, thank you. Uh, you're talking about a volcano in my backyard, specifically Mount Hood. Uh, you say it's silent now. It won't last. It won't stay that way. Why is this a concern? And and uh, why do we not know more about it that that we should know? Yeah, well, um, we, we know enough about Mount Hood to understand what it's done in the last couple hundred thousand years. Um, we know that uh, it most recently erupted in uh, 1781 and that that was about a dozen year long eruption. And um, before that, it was about 1500 years ago. Before that, it was uh, maybe almost 10,000 years um, so it's been um, sort of sort of spotty in terms of how frequently it's erupted. Um, that's one of the concerns is that we don't necessarily know, you know, is it going to erupt in a, in, in a decade or a uh, hundred years or another couple thousand years. And we have to treat it as if it could wake up tomorrow. Uh, it is, there, there are signs that it is still, you know, an alive system in the sense that there are earthquake swarms that happen there fairly routinely. Uh, there's, some volcanic gases that come out of the vent for that fed the 1781 eruption. And uh, that's one of the few volcanoes in the Cascades that still emits volcanic gases. Uh, so there are you know, definitely signs that we should be expecting it to erupt again. The $60 million question is when. Yeah, and uh, maybe a, a multi-billion dollar question since this thing is visible from downtown Portland. I mean, it's, it's, it's just right up the road from us. Um, if this volcano melts, I mean, there are, correct me if I'm wrong, there are glaciers on Mount Hood. I, wouldn't that melt an enormous amount of ice and couldn't that flood the Columbia River and take out Portland and other places? Um, and well, the, the, the first couple things for sure, um, Portland's a fair distance away. It would certainly be, you know, if there was a full on eruption, it would certainly disrupt uh, the greater Portland area to, to varying degrees. Uh, the, the places that are of most, most concern, obviously, are the ones that are close. Mm -hmm. And Mount Hood is, is relatively unique in the Cascades in that it has uh, a, a year round residents that live in what we would consider to be the sort of the near field, places where things could happen fairly fast and it was, wouldn't take a very large eruption to have a fairly large impact on the ski areas, uh, government camp, the highways that go past their Highway 26, Highway 35. Right. Uh, certainly back in, in 1781, um, there were, there were uh, mud flows, what we call lahars, that were produced by eruptions that melted snow and ice and uh, and water flowed down the sandy and certainly reached into the Columbia and uh, and actually the, the leftover sediment from that is formed the Sandy River Delta that goes out into the Columbia. Oh, that's interesting. So uh, the, uh, the I think one of the larger issues here is you know this isn't just a local uh, story context. Uh, my understanding, and, and this, you know, from, from reading articles about this, you and I have not discussed it, and please correct me if I'm wrong or, or fill me in on this. My understanding is that many of these uh, volcanoes around the country, uh, you know, in, in Hawaii, um, the, the potential volcanic activity around uh, Yellowstone, um, it, some, of these, some of these other volcanoes are actually fairly well monitored. They've got all kinds of stations around them. They're testing for gases. They're testing for, for activity. Um, but that Mount Hood and a number of other uh, potential volcanoes in the United States are not being well monitored because we have done such a good job of protecting the forests around them, these wilderness areas, that we can't, uh, quote, build a building, which might even just be a little 10-foot square, 20-foot high monitoring station of some kind on the side of a volcano. Do I have that right? Um, well, it's certainly a complicated issue, and uh, it, it's, it's uh, let me... Uh, go go with the first part of your of your question that for sure there are volcanoes like Mount St. Helens which are very well monitored and Mount St. Helens has had two eruptions in the last 40 years and so it stands to reason that it would be quite well monitored. Um, it's also true in the Cascades that a lot of the other volcanoes that we think have the potential to erupt again 
um, are in places that have land use restrictions. There's a number that are in national parks like Mount Rainier and Crater Lake, and there's others that uh, have a, uh, have are, are at least in partial or in total wilderness. And Mount Hood is one of those, and Glacier Peak is another. Um, the the land use restrictions are are you know are real, and we take them seriously. And uh, our proposals to install instruments are what we feel are kind of the bare minimum for us to be able to, 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 to do the job and make sure that you know, we can uh, help protect people. There's other reasons why uh, some volcanoes are not as well monitored as others, and, and one of them has to do with they're incredibly remote. And there's a volcano up in Washington uh, called Glacier Peak that's in the middle of the Glacier Peak wilderness, and there's no roads out there, and uh, there's no infrastructure like, you know, um, antenna towers and things like that, that we can hang uh, our radio antennas on. And so just the whole question of if we were to put a station out there, getting the data out, um, there's some infrastructure that development that has to happen. Um, and so it's it's uh, taken us longer to figure out how to work in places where the uh, volcanoes are so remote, the logistics are hard, and, and frankly, also the winters are really rough. And uh, winters um, can be pretty brutal on instruments and one of the things that we've learned over the course of working at st helens in part is is how to build things so that they will last through the winter right now we have uh again correct me if i'm wrong on this from alaska all the way down to california there's 161 active volcanoes seven of the 10 most dangerous american volcanoes are in the cascade range and six of those are not adequately monitored do i have that right um, it, it's it, it, around there, yeah. And you know, by, by adequate, um, what we mean is something like on the order of a dozen to 20 or so seismometers and GPS instruments. The seismometers are there for us to record really small earthquakes, and the GPS receivers are there to tell us if the ground is deforming, which uh, would happen if magma starts moving underground. And oftentimes when volcanoes wake up, uh, the initial warning signs are pretty, can be subtle, the earthquakes can be small. The ground deformation can be can be also quite small. And so that's the rationale for having uh, that many instruments, 12, 12 to 20. And, and there's not that many volcanoes that have that level. That being said, um, a number of the volcanoes have what we would consider to be a basic level. Um, so Mount Rainier is in that category, although it's actually getting close to being uh, where we want it to be. Um, Mount Hood is also in that category. It's got eight seismometers right now, and, and that's not bad. Uh, the problem there really is that it only has three GBS instruments, and that number needs to be greater if we're going to be able to detect deformation uh, on a small scale. Right. And other countries that have this problem, Japan, Chile, Iceland, uh, they're, are they doing a good and adequate job of monitoring their volcanoes? Yeah, different countries uh, are, are doing things in some cases better than we are. Japan is, you know, one of the, the gold standards out there. And, uh, you know, part of the reason perhaps is that their volcanoes erupt more frequently. There have been people that have been killed more recently uh, by volcanoes. And so the, the hazard is, is, is fresher in the minds of people there. Right. Um, but, uh, and, and Chile uh, more recently also has, has bolstered its network. And that's also in response to a couple of pretty, uh, decently large eruptions that uh, that got a lot of people's attention.